Clorand is here, and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know to make her OP without any of the BS. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you're considering topping up or purchasing the Welkin Moon in Genshin Impact, then you are going to love Loot Bar. Loot Bar is a platform that allows you to top up your Genesis Crystals and Welkin Moons in Genshin Impact at up to a 20% discount compared to the in-game prices. Your Genshin account is 100% secure during the process. The only account information you need to provide is your in-game user ID and the server region that you play on. Looking at current prices on Loot Bar, you can purchase the $50 Genesis Crystal Pack for $42.80, saving over $7. And the Loot Bar has also been endorsed by some of your favorite popular and trustworthy content creators. When you purchase the Loot Bar, you will still get your first time buyer bonus. Once purchased, you will receive your crystals in-game within just minutes. Sign up for Loot Bar today and you'll get an additional 5% off on your first purchase. You can sign up with the link in the pinned comment below. The priority for Clarence's talent should be her skill, then burst. You don't need to level her normal attack at all, so that increases her sword attacks and not the electro gunshots. For her combos, there is only one combo you need to memorize on Clarant, that is N3E during her skill duration. This refers to doing three gunshots and then tapping her skill to do the launching attack. You'll rinse and repeat that as many times as possible during her skill. For Clarant's weapons, her best weapon is her signature, Absolution. However, Haran Kepapuku is very close, and so is Uraku Misugiri if you are using a Geo unit such as Yunjin on the team. If you aren't using a Geo unit, Light of Folio Incision will be your third best weapon, followed by Uraku and Mist Splitter. Jade Cutter is not highly recommended on Clarand, as she ascends with crit rate and buffs her own crit rate by 20%, so she will easily overcap with Jade Cutter, but it is a good option if you don't have the prior mentioned 5 star swords. If you don't have any of the 5 star options available, an R5 Black Sword is the next best option, and for more accessible options, there's Lion's Roar, Finale of the Deep, Iron Stink, and Harbinger of Dawn, in that order. Now for Clarence Artifact Sets, there are four main sets to consider. Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy, Thundering Fury, Gladiators, and Echoes. As you can see from the chart, Thundering Fury has by far the highest personal damage, however, that is if you take advantage of the cooldown reduction to get two Clarenda damage windows per rotation instead of one, allowing you to do nearly two rotations worth of damage in considerably less time than it would take to do two full rotations. This makes Thundering Fury easily the best set for Clorand, but only if she is paired with teammates that are able to quickly recast their abilities between each Clorand damage window. For example, characters like Fischl, Kazuha, and Kirara are characters that work great for Thundering Fury, but characters such as Yunjin or Baizu will not work well with Thundering Fury. On the same note, you will also not be able to use Thundering Fury if you are using Clarand in a team such as a Chevros Overload team, or she's not triggering many Electro Reactions. So basically, if you are using characters that can't maintain their abilities between each Clarand damage window, or if Clarand isn't reliably tr triggering reactions, you won't want to use Thundering Fury. Additionally, one more thing to keep in mind is that Clarence's damage in each damage window is considerably lower with Thundering Fury, so if you have a very highly invested Clarant with some constellations and stuff, it may be better to use one of the other sets so that she can do enough damage to finish off the content in one damage window rather than two, however that does take quite a lot of investment to reach those thresholds. But if you're not using Thundering Fury, Fragments is the best set option, however Echoes is only ever so slightly behind. And if you happen to have a really good Gladiator set and don't have a good 4-piece set for the other sets, then Gladiators will be your best option for the time, but you should be aiming to get one of the other sets over time. Also, if you happen to not be using Aggravate, such as in a Chevres Overload team, then Echoes gains a lot of value and actually becomes Clarence's best set, being just slightly ahead of Fragments. Now for the main set stats on Clarence Artifacts, you want to use Attack Sense or EM, Electro or Attack Goblet, and Crit or Attack Sarklet. Attack Sense is almost always preferred over EM, as in Aggravate it's about 10% ahead of EM, 
If you are playing Quick Bloom or using Light of Foliar or Incision, then EM will be equivalent to attack. For the Goblet, Electro is preferred, but attack is only about 4% behind, so if you have a better attack Goblet than Electro, by all means, use it. The same applies to the Sarklet. Attack is only about 3% behind crit, so if you have a high crit value attack circlet, don't be afraid to use it. Now keep in mind with attack goblet and circlet, however, they do lose a ton of value in some situations. If you're using an attack percent weapon like Lion's Roar, or a low base attack weapon like Harbinger of Darn, you do not want to use an attack goblet or circlet. Or if you're using Yunjin, you also won't want attack percent, as Yunjin's buff does not scale with Clarence attack. Furthermore, if you by any chance are already reaching the attack limit of 3000 for Clarence passive, then you won't want to use attack percent there either. And for the substats, focus on crit, then attack. EM substats are fine to roll, but shouldn't be a priority. ER substats are also not needed, as Clarence typically is used in double electro teams with Fischl, and even if you can't burst in a rotation with Clarence, it's not a big deal, as long as you were able to use it in the first rotation. For Clarence teams, her best team structure is, by far, Aggravate. This is because Clarence kit is designed around having a very high hit count, but with low base multipliers on each individual hit. Aggravate adds a sizable base ba damage buff to about a third of Clarence damage, which more than doubles the damage of the hits that do get buffed by Aggravate. So Clarence team core is Clarence, Fischl, a Dendro unit, and two flex slots. Fischl is pretty much irreplaceable, as Clarence Kit makes her the perfect Fischl driver. She performs a ton of normal attacks for Fischl C6, and gets a lot of aggravates for Fischl's A4, and Fischl will aggravate alongside Clarence while benefiting from the same buffs. On top of that, Fischl will allow Clarence to easily use her burst every rotation without needing any energy recharge. So more often than not, Fischl's personal damage will outweigh the damage you would gain by using a buffer instead of Fischl. But if you have a highly invested Clarence such as C2R1 or C6, then you may want to use a buffer instead of Fischl. Now for the Dendro slot, you want to use either a C4 plus Kirara or Nahida. Kirara is incredibly valuable for Clarence, as Clarence is a ranged DPS with very little poise, so Kirara's shield helps a lot. Kirara's Dendro application is also set up to where it is still very easy to trigger Electro Swirl or Crystallize Reactions for consistent rotation setups. And Kirara has a short enough cooldown on her skill to use it twice per rotation if you are using Thundering Fury. If you use Kirara, she does need to be at least C4, as this is where she gains off-field Dendro application. You'll also want to make sure you use her on 4-piece instructors to maximize buffing. Nahida deals substantially higher personal damage than Kirara, while having some good EM buffing. However, she takes far more field time than Kirara, and her denture application can make rotation subs for Swirl or Crystallize much more difficult. Because of this, a C4 plus Kirara will pretty much always be better than a C0 Nahida, but if you have a C2 Nahida, absolutely use her. And then for the flex slot, there are two primary options, Yunjin and Kazuha. Yunjin is incredible for single target, as Clarence makes perfect use out of all Yunjin's buffing. The base damage buff by Yunjin provides is perfect for Clarence's lower multipliers, the 15% damage bonus from Yunjin C2 is good, and the 12% attack speed from Yunjin C6 is phenomenal on Clarence, as she doesn't have hit lag, so this allows her to perform an entire extra combo. On top of that, Yunjin is Geo, so she can use Archaic Petra, provide 35% damage bonus to both Clarence and Fischl at the same time. With all of those factors combined, Yunjin buffs Clarence's damage by an insane 74%, which is far more than what any other character can buff Clarence's damage by. Just keep in mind that Yunjin's buffing does fall off in AoE, and if you are using Nahida, Archaic Petra won't be very consistent. Yunjin also does not work very well with Thundering Fury Clarence, as her buffs will be expired well before the second Clarence damage window. Kazuha is excellent as he provides great buffing as well as great grouping, and since he can provide all of his buffs just by using his skill, which has a short cooldown, he works great even with Thundering Fury Clarence. 
So an optimal full team will be Clarant, Kirara, Fischl, and Yunjin for mostly single target situations, and Clarant, Kirara, Fischl, Kazuha for more AoE focused situations. Sucrose can be used instead of Kazuha there, but it's not as visible as she has far inferior grouping to Kazuha. If you want to maximize Clarant's personal damage in a single damage window, then the recommended team is Clarant, Kirara, Yunjin, Kazuha. This is inferior to using Fischl unless you have a very highly invest investment into your Clarand, so I would not recommend doing this until you have at least C2 R1 Clarand and excellent artifacts. With that said, Aggravate Clarand is Clarand's strongest team option, however she does have a couple more viable team options. Chevrous Overload works pretty well for Clarand, with the team ideally being Clarand, Fischl, Chevrous, Bennett. There is no off-build pyro in this team, so you won't get full uptime on Ch Chevrous's resistance shred, but Clorand does have low field time during e each damage window, so the uptime is still good for her. While this team is solid and has similar DPS to Clorand's Aggravate teams, there isn't much reason to use it over those teams. Aggravate has comfort through shielding with Kirara, and it can get grouping from Kazuha, and it's not confined to Bennett's Circle Impact. And Circle Impact can be quite a nuisance for Clarand since she is lunging around a lot. I would only recommend this team if you happen to have a C6 Chevrous, but don't have the supports for Aggravate available. Quick Bloom also works, as Clarand will get a high amount of Aggravates, however she doesn't have any EM scaling or EM buffs of her own to take full advantage of both Aggravate and Hyper Bloom the way someone like Sino can. The Hydro options also don't provide Clarand as much value as someone like Kazuha or Yunjin. And since Quick Bloom heavily desires Nahida's stronger Dendro application, the team will run into issues in multi wave content. But if you do play Quick Bloom Clarand, the team should be Clarand, Nahida, Fischl, and either Farina or Yelan for the Hydro. Farina is the most optimal because Clarand heals herself, and Farina's healing bonus improves Clarand's healing by a lot. So Clarant can easily generate fanfare with self heals, while causing overflow healing for, for Farina's team art healing every time. Farina's skill and burst duration are also aligned very well for the longer rotations with Thundering Fury. Now for Clarant's constellations, she has very strong early constellations. C1 provides a coordinated attack that hits 3 times every 1.2 seconds during Clarence's damage window, so 6 times total. The C1 only hits for 30% of Clarence's attack, however it is considered normal attack damage, so it gets the extra 60% attack scaling from Clarence's passive on all 3 hits each time, also getting an aggravate each time. This is a massive 20-30% to damage increase for Clarence depending on the team, and is our second strongest constellation overall. C2 changes her passive from 60% attack to 90%, which is a very nice 19% damage increase. C3 is not very good, as the talent level increase does not affect the extra attack scaling from Clarence's passive, which is where a large portion of her scalings come from. C4 is also not great, it makes her burst do a lot more damage, but the burst is still nothing spectacular, and will primarily still be used to set up the initial electro for rotation setups. Same applies to C5, more burst damage, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. Then her C6 is by far her best constellation. It gives her a ton of crit value, as well as an extra 6 coordinated attacks, which apply electro for aggravate each time, making for a massive damage increase. On top of that, she gains an absurd amount of damage reduction and interruption resistance, allowing her to face tank anything even without a shield. With that said, what should be your priority if you want to vertically invest into Clarand? C1 is pretty much always going to be her largest early damage increase, so prioritize that first. Then, if you are currently not using one of Clarand's best 5 star weapons, you'll want to focus on getting a weapon like Absolution, Haran, Uraku, or Light of Folio Incision, and then after that, get her to C2. After that, C3 to C5 are not that great for Clarand, but you can still go for them if you intend to C6 Clarand eventually. Then getting Freedom Swan on Kazuha if using him, and or a 5 star weapon like the First Great Magic for Fischl, also solid investments that you can make. 
I don't really recommend pulling C2, Nahida specifically for Clorand, because while it is a large damage increase, relative to the primo gem cost of taking her from C0 to C2, it's not that great, and you would have gotten better value by just trying to C6 Clorand over time. But if you happen to already have Nahida at like C1, you can absolutely take her to C2. And that's everything you need to know to make your Clorand OP. If you found this video informative or enjoyable at, at all, please consider subscribing to the channel, as that helps me out a lot. Please also leave a like and comment letting me know your thoughts. Thanks. Goodbye. Yeah.